Anyway, these are uh, Herrig hubs. The standard one inch big diameter. Um, I, I want to show that if you make gauges to check tapers uh, or to check stuff while you're machining it, like if you make something that you want to match to a taper, just just take a piece of aluminum and chop mill it in the vertical down direction because it cuts the angle exactly. You know, so it, you don't need to use the hole. You don't need to get a big one inch piece of stock to fill the whole hole. All you're doing is making a, a checker. Uh, okay, the main thing that I'll, I'll point out in the video is how the tapers, there's just so many uh, and things are in so so much disarray that that's why I did the video because of checking into these and other things and, and trying to find out a taper for a guy on the free Freeport machine, city where I was born, by the way. Because of that, I ended up coming up with a lot of information, and I figured, well, I'll upload it to the internet because the, the information is so mixed and such a jumbled nightmare that most of the tapers and angles, if you look on the blogs, half of the stuff, the angles, they're put wrong because of little mistakes. I myself did it. I drew up an R8, and instead of using the base number, three and a half inches per foot, I instead checked dimensions and went by the dimensions. And so what it did was it integrated very slight discrepancies into the database. So anyway, that's what the video is. Uh, the, the slides, of course, you hit pause and then you do screen captures using snipping tool or snip it. Everybody has it on their computer, by the way. And then you just save them or you rewatch the video or whatever, but it's a good collection of a lot of crap. Okay, here we go. I forgot to mention that a big part of the video is that I worked out all the information on Big Plus uh, dual contact spindles because in shops there can be a mix of machines that can have a Big Plus spindle where they can get dual contact holders and they don't even know it. They don't know what the machine is. Uh, and so this chart here that you'll see, ignore this part, this video right now of me talking but go by this that I attach but this is hugely important because I came up with a ratio so that no matter what the machine you can come up with each combination to tell exactly what you've got both spindle and the holders see I put over a division times 1.222 1.57 so this right here is you definitely want to say that big plus dual contact spindle uh, some of them are done by Kaiser, a company called Kaiser. Anyway, look at those small differences. Six thousandths difference. Those are just obscure hubs, but I, show, I put that in there just as an example to be careful. That's a very good drawing there. Uh, after the letters go away, you can save it. Do a screen capture. That's, that is one, one good drawing you want to save right there. This explains why those two lines are there that I keep yapping about. And because you, you need to know where to draw them on the cone for your hub. And that's how you do it. It's very easy. It looks, you know, it looks bad, but it really isn't. See the two lines? That's what those are. That's what that hub is there. I, I trimmed the model. And so that is a Herrig hub right there. And there's a, there's a Herrig hub. See, the numbers are there. The numbers are there. I threw a lot of crap in here. That's for that second cone, the problem cone. I think it was blue. That's what that hub is. And that hub I just mentioned, that's what it goes on. Inco, Freeport, and others that look similar.
Acer, Supra, Kent, so many names, I can't list them all. But they all show up on identical looking machines. Why? I do not know. This is just some information here for people. Is just some more information. In other words, that goes with that previous slide. That'll get you into trouble. That 16.26 is only a quick change holder, a standalone quick change holder. Notice the degrees is very, very close to the other degrees on the other milling machines, milling machine taper. Just Morse taper there just for general information to place into the video so that it's a package of information. Morse taper, notice they're all different. Old information, see that Morse taper down there? That's not there. Now maybe that applied to part of the sketch below that got chopped off. I don't know. Three inches per foot. Uh, which is what you use, but instead they put 1651 to confuse everyone, 16 degrees, 51 minutes, that you can't enter into a calculator. I mean, with the, it's, the country's in disarray. 5C collets are 10 degrees per side. They, they are their own collet. As are ER collets, ER16, ER32, those were specifically designed. Okay, now there is your if you want to hit pause, you want to do it on that. See, that dash line would be the perfect taper. So if you're, if you're making one inside or outside, you tweak it a little so that it pinches in the correct place. And the video slideshow ends up with big plus information. Big plus dual contact spindles are very important and very few people know if they have them or not. It can add thousands of dollars to the value of your machine if you sell it. And there you go. Save that. For God's sake, save that. Right what you see there. I put a lot of work into that. I finish up. There's the Bridgeport taper. There's my email. I mean, what? Somebody's going to come here and kill me because of my email? <laughs>